I'll just say this, we're going to take you and you can look at it for yourself. Again, disclaimer, uh, this is PG, so be sure if you're in the room or children in the room that parents are in the room with the children. Uh, it's very fast moving. Also, the, um, in terms of the resolution, it's not really sharp. We pulled this off of YouTube and uh, we're thankful for the source that, that provides it for uh, all of America to see and we're able to, uh, to actually share it with you through the, the, uh, the, the Fair, Fairness Act. And so we want you to watch this. Here we go, it's shocking. Fasten your seat belts. All right, JL, take us in and show us the footage. Wow, wow, listen, let, let me ask you a question. I know that um, uh, the footage we just show that we just showed you and shared with you is really controversial, but how many times do you think that God has miraculously delivered you? You know, I don't know if uh, you, you were watching closely. I, I told uh, Pastor Jake uh, while, we were, uh, while we were on set watching the same video you're watching, when that sign fell, I said, "My God, that that guy My should have goodness. should have should have got the message." The baby that that falls, uh, they say, it was something like seven or eight stories, and My they they goodness. caught that baby mm -hmm. and all of that. When the pole goes through that the, the glass and that guy driving the truck, right, and just barely missed. None him. none of those people uh, were actually hurt. They had, they came out with scratches wow. or whatever, but all of those people actually came out unharmed. Wow. So today we're talking about the unseen world, and uh, of course the internet is filled with a lot of uh, what I call spoof videos. 
but that's actual footage of people that should have been dead. Mm -hmm. And today, we want to minister to you about the power of the Holy Spirit. Really, it's the power of God yes. that protects us. You know, the Bible tells us in the book of Psalms, that tells us in Psalms 91, he who dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge yes. and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Surely He will save you from the fowler's nest and from the deadly pestilence, and He will cover you with His feathers, and under His wings you will find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. Listen to this, and you shall not be afraid of the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in the darkness, nor the plague that destroys at midday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand your right hand, but it will not come near you. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. If you make the Most High your dwelling, even the Lord, who is your refuge, then no harm will befall you. No disaster will come near your tent. Listen to this, for he will, I love this, Jake, mm. command his angels yes. concerning you to guard you in all of your ways. Wow. And then it goes on to say, and this is actually out of Isaiah too, they will lift you up in their hands. The Bible says, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways, and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Yes. This is amazing. Uh, in our own life, we've had interventions. Yes. And I can think about, um, you know, for example, your mother and I being hit by a drunk driver. Some of you may or may not um, be aware of it, but Jordan and I, a little more than three years ago, were rear-ended by a third offense drunk driver that hit us, and they estimated he was doing 90 miles per hour. Man. Can you imagine that? 90 miles per hour, and we were doing 15 miles per hour. And all, all I remember, Jake, is when that truck hit your mm -hmm. mom and I, um, thankful we were driving the Ford yes, Excursion, yes. but still he was driving a van. Yes. We were doing 15, that's one It was a country five. road, really. I mean, it's a, a little small country road, and he was doing 90 miles an hour yeah. for God knows what reason why. Yeah. Well, and he was drunk. Yeah. You know, his alcohol limit was like off the scales, and he actually fled the scene, but mm -hmm. I'll never forget Jake, when he hit us, we, your mother and I screamed, Jesus. Mm. We just cried out, Jesus, yes, in the name yes. of Jesus. And I heard her, I heard uh, uh, Jordana say Jesus, and I said Jesus. And the moment that we said his name, it's like everything in the truck yes. slowed down yes. into warp speed. And I could see Jordana reaching up and uh, your mom grabbing the handle, and it was like everything was flying in the truck, so, uh, yes. you know, and I put my hand in front of her and, and one hand on the wheel, and um, he hit us so hard, he actually catapulted us uh, literally about, a, maybe about 140, 200 feet, where we hit a contractor's truck pulling a trailer, mm -hmm. and when we hit that truck, he was so drunk that Jake, he, he didn't break, and he hit us again. Mm. So there was three impacts. One, the initial impact. Two, of us hitting the contractor's mm. truck and the mm. trailer. And number three, he was so drunk, he wasn't able to break, and he caught up and hit us a third time. Thank God we were able to walk away from yes. that accident. Yes. They thought that I, that they originally thought that there were all the, the bones in my back were fractured and broken. Mm -hmm. But Jake, when I went to the hospital, and, mm -hmm. and uh, I asked the doctor, we were, they were, they had already tested me, and we were laying in the hospital room. Your mother was sitting beside me in a, in a neck brace, and I kindly asked the doctor, I said, if you, if you would, if you would just give my wife just a couple of three moments, and I'll never forget the look on his face, mm -hmm. uh, almost like, you know, why would you want yeah, me to leave yeah. the room? I said, we just need a couple of moments for privacy, and mm -hmm. so he said, yes, sir, stepped out of the room, and uh, your mother laid hands on me, and uh, I began to pray, and I said, Lord, I don't know why this happened, but I know this one thing. I believe that the angel, your angels, mm. watched over us and delivered us for your namesake and your yes. glory. 
So Lord, now I need you to heal me. And I'll never forget, it was the warmest sensation. And uh, your mother was sort of at, uh, my, at the end of the bed and she had her hand uh, on my leg. Mm -hmm. But I felt the warmest hand just set down on my chest. And son, it was just like somebody turned a faucet yeah. on and all that pain drained out of my body. Mm -hmm. The short version is when the doctors went back and tested me, they were shocked because they could not figure out that uh, why it is that they thought my back was broken in all those places. Yeah. But when they went back and tested me, there was not a bone broken. Yeah, the suburban, the suburban is, is larger than, I mean, not the suburban, it was the, the excursion, excursion mm -hmm. is larger than a suburban. And it was crushed. Right. I mean, it was completely told. Right. And I remember getting the phone call um, and I began praying in the car. And of course, in those moments, um, fear has a tend to, to grip you. Mm -hmm. And I began to pray and I heard the Holy Spirit say so quickly, I have already protected them. Mm -hmm. And I think that a lot of times we have to take ourselves out of this natural world mm -hmm. and begin to see what God has done. And I begin mm -hmm. to imagine mm -hmm. the angels around your car protecting, right. even though we don't know these things could happen. Just like I think that so many of uh, these videos, these people didn't know they would be in the middle of a car accident. Right. They didn't know these right. things were coming, yet God's angels were around them yeah. protecting them. Yeah. Which I'm sure not all of them you know, were believers, but you know, God, the Bible said, many are the plans uh, in a man's heart, but the Lord's purposes shall prevail. Yes. And God ultimately protects his plan. Mm -hmm. And that's why you and I need to work hard to stay in his will, because there is really no promise mm -hmm. for unbelievers. Mm -hmm. There's grace and there's mercy. Obviously, you just seen it. Uh, happened uh, in the last video that, that we showed to you. But thank God as believers, yes. Pastor, that we have these invisible forces yes. all around us. Let me ask you a question today. Uh, have you ever had a supernatural event, mm -hmm. a near miss, uh, maybe something that happened where you should have died or been injured, badly injured? And when you look back on it, you say like, wow, I should have never lived through that. I want you to think about that because here is the fact. Angels are real. Yes. And the Bible instructs us, uh, Pastor, not to worship angels, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but they are real and they are messengers. Yes. And they are divine messengers uh, that uh, are assigned to watch over you and I, mm -hmm. our children. And today I want to encourage you, we're going we're gonna to take you uh, in just a moment, I want to take you into the second uh, piece of footage we have. This is, uh, we're getting ready to show you Diane Sawyer and an interview uh, that took place a few years ago about a young lady that was in a very bad car accident and she was trapped in her car. All the emergency workers were there and they could not get her out. And uh, they were afraid for her life until she received divine intervention by a very mysterious character. So JL, if we have that, let's run it. Here we go. Thanks to, um, I believe it's ABC News. People are scouring nearly 70 photographs looking for some sign of a man they swear they saw at the scene of a car accident. He prayed a life was saved. So why did he disappear even from the photos? ABC's David Muir now on Faith and a Mystery Tonight. Tonight it's being called the Missouri Miracle. Much of it, though, still a mystery. A teenager with a beautiful smile, 19-year-old Katie Lentz, trapped in her mangled car, hit by a drunk driver, and first responders trying to get her out. Sheriff's Deputy Richard Adair won't forget when the fire chief turned to him in despair. He was concerned because he was out of options. The tools weren't working. and. Uh... It was, by that time, I, I said almost an hour. He said, I don't know how we're gonna get her out. And I said, Raymond, we, I promised her mother and her that we get her out. Well, inside that car, Katie had one request, to pray with the rescuers out loud. And then suddenly right there amidst the rows of corn at the scene blocked off for nearly a mile, a man appears. He was dressed in a black priest shirt with a white collar. And the rescuers notice something else. He was carrying a small bottle. He had a small little white container of anointment oil is what it appeared to be. And he asked if he could anoint um, the girl in the car. And at first, my first thought was that it would possibly send the wrong message to Katie, that maybe we had called a priest. 
but they allow him to do it. A sense of, of calmness come over her then, even more so than what she had been already. I can't be for certain who said or how it was said or where it come from. We very plainly heard that, that we should remain calm, that uh, our tools would, would now work, and that we would get her out of that vehicle. Moments later, it happened. A neighboring fire department arrives with a new set of stronger tools, finally able to cut through that frame. They all turned to thank the priest, but he was gone. In fact, in all of those photos at the scene, no sign of the priest. And tonight, family and friends are grateful. Whether it was just a, a, a priest as an angel, serving as an angel, or an actual angel that came in, he was an angel to, to all those and to Katie. The fire department's Facebook page tonight filling up fast. Do any of the responders know who the priest was that seemingly appeared out of nowhere? I would love to shake his hand. And tonight from Katie's mother, a message too. Very pleased that Katie's near tragic accident provides proof to all that miracles still happen. Her mother adding, please continue to pray for her. And in Katie's words, pray out loud. Pray out loud. And today we reached out to 15 churches within 30 miles of that accident scene. No one could tell us who the man was. And as for Katie, six and a half hours of surgery, many broken bones, but her mother says her face and that beautiful smile, untouched. But Diane, everyone at that rescue scene, touched by that stranger. And dozens of people saw him, and yet nothing in the photographs. Nothing. Just the story of that white bottle. What an amazing story. Thank you, David. Technical issues. Here we go. Okay, we're back. I tell you, we're going to get all these bugs ironed out. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's an amazing article. Amazing. And to, for, for those of you uh, who are wondering, actually, I did the research. I'm a critical thinker. They actually did find um, the priest. Yeah that was responsible for mm -hmm. being on, on the scene. But still, think about the timing. Because when the Bible talks about messengers, you know, God can use angels and God can use, mm -hmm. God can use people. Yeah, absolutely. You know? They're not accidents. You know, they're, they're not just happenstance. There's someone that's governing these things. And to think that this man was at the right place at the right time to pray with this woman and to release the power of God to affect the situation is absolutely amazing. Right. It's absolutely right, amazing. Right. Yeah, I mean, as we're doing the program today, I wonder, uh, which camera am I on here? Here? Uh, I, wonder, I wonder how uh, many of you that are watching have been in situations or instances in which you can look back and say that had to be mm -hmm. divine intervention. I mean, there's no way I could have got through that unless it would have been for God. And sometimes we're talking about the deliverance of the Lord. We don't realize it, but we are talking about um, that invisible dimension. John Paul Jackson, the late John Paul Jackson, who I love very much and I still have a higher, a, a, a great respect, is a program called, uh, I believe it's called Mysteries of the Kingdom mm -hmm. on Daystar. If some of you I have an opportunity, you need to tune in and watch his program. They're still airing his programs. He talks about that invisible dimension mm -hmm. like a like a, a multi-dimensional chess yes. game yes in which there are angels that are moving all around us in fact mm -hmm. my new book that i'm getting ready to release and i, I can't give the name because the publisher won't allow me, give me the name but the new book i'm about to release is about the supernatural mm -hmm. and the invisible world i believe that there is another dimension that is just literally uh i mean this just right out here mm -hmm. my my father before he passed, once said to me, he said, Marky, I believe that heaven is just a dimension away. There is an invisible realm, Jake, that's all around us mm -hmm. in which these angelic forces in different ranks, different assignments, mm -hmm. are constantly moving around us, especially for the saints. Yes. The Bible tells us that each one of us have no less than seven angels. Mm -hmm. One angel uh, has the power just with the passing of, of his hand uh, uh, to destroy thousands of people and to intervene, divine yes. uh, intervention. And so uh, I want you to know today that God is looking out for you. And perhaps maybe you're watching today and you're going through something in your own life. Uh, I want you to think about what we're talking about today. The Bible says, whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Yes. 
And uh, I believe that when we say the name of Jesus, it immediately, uh, it immediately triggers and sets in motion and initiates mm -hmm. an angelic response. Yeah. And some of you uh, that are watching today, there's no doubt in my mind that some of you that are watching perhaps are going through trials, tribulations, situations, or perhaps a situation that you feel like you cannot escape from. I want you to think back over your life right now and think about all that God has delivered you from and brought you through. And let me tell you, Jake, if God did it for us one time, yes, he, he can do it again. That's right. I'm reminded of a story of Chuck Pierce. He was talking about he had had this dream, and in this dream he had seen a host of angels, and they were in military form. And he said they were further than the eye could see. They were waiting. And he looked at the, per the angel next to him, and he said, who are these people? What, what are they doing? He said, these are the angels of God. And if the believers only knew what power was available to them and only knew that these angels were waiting for to be commanded, waiting to be released onto our lives to help us in our lives. The, the angels are messengers. They're mm. people that carry the power of God. They're, they're often um, people that give any, even change circumstances. I remember a story. People are beings. Pe yeah, I mean, absolutely. Be, I should say, Angelic beings or natural, natural beings. Absolutely, men right. and women can yeah. men, men and women of faith can be yeah. commanded. And, and also. can I just can I say this too? Yeah. Also, yeah. animals, because you saw in the video. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you some of you caught it, but in the one video, the, 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 the there was a, a, a dog mm -hmm. that attacked that infant mm -hmm. and was dragging that infant away to try to get the get to the place where it could get the, the you know those dogs attacked mm -hmm. the head and they attacked the air passage. Yes, and out of nowhere. That cat, I think it was a black cat, and not all black cats are bad. <laughs> that black cat just attacked that dog mm -hmm. out of nowhere. And you know, that's, that's an anomaly. No, absolutely. And so God can use uh, anything, can he? He can absolutely use anything. And I think that yeah. if we will be, re uh, we remember that and mm -hmm. constantly say, God, I thank you that you're involved in this situation. I mm -hmm. thank you that we don't have to live in fear. We say, Father, mm -hmm. I thank you that you go with my children to school. Father, mm -hmm. I thank you that you're with my husband that's across the United mm -hmm. States on mm -hmm. a business job or mm -hmm. other things. We can activate that if we just take the time to realize right. it's there. Right. And God, I, rem I remember the scripture in, in Psalms and it says that God takes delight when we're happy. Mm -hmm. His goal is to make sure that our life is that's good. good. And that is the power that we have is we that's can good. activate it and say, God, I thank you that your angels are around and about my home. I don't have to Amen. fear, no matter if you live in Detroit, if you live in, in New York, mm -hmm. or if you even live in Chicago, God's power is available to protect you Amen. and to watch after Amen. you. Amen. I tell you, that's true. And we, and we, you know, we want to hear from you. I'd like to invite those of you who are watching, uh, if you're watching right now, first of all, show some love. If you're watching on <laughs> Facebook Live, that you'll see at the bottom of the screen, you'll see hearts there and thumbs up and smiley faces. Will you please begin to hit those and uh, show us some love? And if you would, go to um, our Facebook page. It's facebook.com forward slash W or my WWOC and leave your comments and your testimonies. You know, people that are watching, we had well over 2,000 uh, viewers last week and it's growing. And there are people that need to hear your testimony and need to hear what God has done for you. You know, our, our family, mm -hmm. Jake, has been, um, we have experienced divine intervention yes. so many times. You know, when you were little, uh, you know, uh, at one point, uh, the doctors were saying that you were dying mm -hmm. and God healed you, mm -hmm. miraculously healed you. Mm -hmm. uh, I can think of instances and in all, because, you know, raising boys, you need angels. Uh, and all of you, you boys' lives mm -hmm. were, we look back and we realize if it would, was not for the Lord, yes, uh, you guys would not be here today. Yes, And so divine intervention is real. And I want to invite you today, if you have comments, please go to our Facebook page, Instagram, Twitter, and uh, please comment about today's program and share today's program with someone who needs to know that they too have a God that loves them that cares for them, mm. that is watching after them. Maybe you're watching today and maybe you feel all alone or maybe you've been going through something and maybe, you know, sometimes the enemy will put thoughts in our minds mm. 
and say things like God, you know, there is no God or God is not watching over you and this just this this is all this is all fake. God is angry with you. Right. You know? Yeah, but let me assure you, Pastor Jake and I assure you today that God is not mad at you. God loves you. He's not against you. He's for you. And he loves you enough that he has actually assigned these invisible beings, these agents of light, agents of power, delivering agents that will deliver you for your namesake and your glory. And also, I just feel prophetically today that there's a mother that is watching me, that you have, that you have a son, actually you have children uh, that are in trouble. Mm. And you've not known quite what to do about it. I'm, I'm, I'm seeing specifically, though, a one son that you have been praying for, and you've not known quite what to do about it. Let me tell you, if you will take a moment and pray, I believe that God, God can send the right people. It doesn't have to be, uh, you know, supernatural angels. It can be the right people. God knows how to set you up to bring you in. And I just feel like I'm talking to someone today. There's also another lady that's watching today that your marriage uh, has been suffering. You've been going through some things in your marriage. I feel to tell you that deliverance is coming. God is intervening. God has heard your prayers. Mm -hmm. And uh, when he does it, uh, you don't need to accept it or to look at it like it's a coincidence. You need to lift your hands and say, the bishop, Pastor Jake, told me uh, that day I was watching Unlimited. They told me that uh, God was going to give me this miracle. There's some of you that are watching today that are sick in your body. God is a healer. Right, Jake? And we yes, pray for people right. here. I mean, you've, you've prayed and prophesied over so many people. Mm -hmm. Miracles, signs, mm -hmm. and wonders. Can you think of... Yeah, you know, in fact, you were talking about a, a, a mother who is praying for the son. I'm reminded of a story. There was a young man that came mm -hmm. to the church uh, several years ago, and he just grabbed me, and he said, please pray with me. My brother's in prison. He's been put in prison, and there's a plot to kill him. And she said, he said, we sat there and we prayed together. Mm -hmm. At that moment, we didn't realize that men had gathered around this young wow. man. He was, in, he was in his teens. Wow. Had gathered around this young man, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, uh, this this guard came in and put a stop to it, and the wow. young man thanked him and he said, "I'm a guardian angel sent to you," and never angel. saw that man again. Never wow. saw that guard wow. again. I believe, just like Romans eight and eleven says, I love this verse. It says, "The same power that raised Jesus Christ wow. the dead, that's available to us." That's awesome. And all we have that's to awesome. do is activate it and release it, and it'll be done. Awesome. Well, let me invite you because we're almost out of time. I think we have about, what about a minute left. Let me invite you to write us and to let us know, um, you know, if you've enjoyed Unlimited, uh, we're learning, we're growing, we don't know everything about uh, what we're doing, so we're growing. As some of you know, we are pioneering the Open Heavens Network, and uh, that is soon to come. We're just weeks away. In fact, exciting news, in a few days, we will actually have prayer partners that will be here to answer your call. You can call from anywhere in the world. It's toll free and you can pick up the phone and dial us and there will be someone on the other side of the line that will be waiting to pray for you. But until then, will you take a moment and um, comment? Let us know whether you're, you're enjoying the program. We welcome all of your comments, your suggestions. All of it is welcome. I want to say to you that we love you, and I want to thank you for your time. Right, Jake? We know your time is available. Uh, I, I'm not available. Your time is... Uh, uh, your <laughs> valuable. It's valuable. Your time is valuable. Yeah. Yikes. <laughs> and uh, we know that um, uh, it's priceless, and we so appreciate you taking the time uh, to watch us today on Unlimited. And please invite your friends mm. to watch this broadcast. Share it over and over and over again for someone who may need to know that God has a little help that they don't know about. Angels, the invisible world. Well, we're out of time today. Let me tell you that we love you. God bless you. Remember this, nothing is impossible with God right. because He is unlimited. We'll see you next time. God bless you.